Hi, my name is Samir Shindri and I serve as the director of the Performance Research Laboratory at the University of Oregon. Today I'll be describing the Tau Performance System and show you a demo on Archer. So the Tau Performance System comprises three distinct parts of instrumentation where we insert hooks into the parallel program and then perform the measurements such as measuring the total time spent in the application at the level of routines or loops or basic blocks. We can provide the profiles as well as traces. And then the third component of Tau is analysis where tools such as Paraprof and Perf Explorer can be used to evaluate the performance of the code after it has finished execution. One of the core technologies for Tau is the program database toolkit, which is a static analysis system used by Tau. So PDT has a set of C and C++ and Fortran parsers included in it in a binary form. This parsers, these parsers parse the source code of the application and create the intermediate language representation, which is then used by the analyzers to create program database files. Now, these files contain information about where the routines start and stop, all the entry and exit points. It includes information at the loop level, so we can do the instrumentation using the tau instrumenter. So the tau instrumenter essentially takes the application source code and the parsed representation, which is uh, emitted by the PDT parsers. And then it creates an instrumented copy of the source code with hooks inserted. So, so that there are statements such as tau start and stop around, around the loops and at the entry and exit of functions. It also takes an instrumentation specification file where we can exclude or include functions. So we could, for instance, say that uh, we want to instrument all the functions in the file except uh, a, a list of uh, functions that we want to eliminate from instrumentation. We can also specify other instrumentation points of the program for memory instrumentation and loop level instrumentation and so on. So Tau supports instrumentation at the level of Fortran, C, C++, UPC, Java. We also support Python in automatic instrumentation of these programs. It supports a number of runtimes including MPI, OpenSman, RMC, PGAS, and the DMAP runtime on Cray systems. We can also do instrumentation at the level of pthreads, OpenMP. We have recently added the support for OpenMP tools interface. And uh, we can instrument programs with MPI and OpenMP and so on. Uh, Tau is also available uh, for supporting instrumentation for GPU executions. So we can support CUDA instrumentation, OpenCL, OpenACC, and it supports both profiling and tracing modes of uh, instrumentation. I'll show the Paraprof and Perfect Explorer tools and the Tau database technology. Uh, but we'll do most of our analysis using the 3D profile browser from Paraprof. So uh, one of the key things to remember about Tau is that it supports both sampling and direct instrumentation. So when you use sampling, you get a periodic interrupt. And the program pauses and looks at the call stack. It looks at the program counter. And based on that, we can estimate the total time spent in the program. Now Tau has an has a environment variable called tau sampling equals 1. When a user sets this, any instrumented program generates samples. You can also enable this with another tool called Tau Exec that I'll describe. Direct instrumentation, on the other hand, allows you to insert hooks at precisely well, 
well defined points in the program such as the entry and exit points for a function or the boundaries of a loop where you can measure precisely the wall clock time and hardware performance counters that uh, are, are measured at those points. It also supports some form of memory debugging as well as well as the IO performance evaluation and it will show how it supports both profiling and tracing modes of measurements. It also interfaces with the score P measurement library so you can generate OTF2 traces that can be loaded in third party tools such as Vampire which is a commercial trace visualizer. So what can Tao show you? It can show you how much time is being spent in each routine and at uh, which loops. We can measure the contribution of outer loops or inner loops within that. And also within the loops, you can see the contribution of each statement if you turn on sampling. It can show you the time spent in OpenMP loops as well. And besides the time, you can measure other metrics as well, such as floating point instructions, level one and level two data cache misses, hits, vectorization, intensity, and so on. It shows you the memory usage of the code where we can record where and when memory gets allocated, deallocated. We can also see if there are memory leaks and the, what is the memory footprint of the application. As the application executes, we can observe the high water mark of the memory usage of the application. It can also track the memory, sorry, the energy usage in joules if you set a metric of uh, energy for top of measure. And we can see the peak power usage. So there are other things that we can measure such as uh, IO in the application. So we can see for each file that the application touched on each rank, what was the read and write bandwidth? What was the peak volume uh, of uh, IO? And we can also do the contribution of uh, each phase of the program and see where the time is being spent within a given phase. So a user can specify different phases of computation and annotate those using an instrumentation specification file. And based on that annotation specification, how can measure the contribution of each phase. It can also show you how the application scales. You can see on x-axis the the number of cores and along the y-axis you can measure the efficiency or the runtime breakdown of performance across different core counts. We use the Tau database and the Perf Explorer tool to do the application scalability studies. So when you download Tau, you can configure it with a number of different options. Like if we just consider an installation on a Cray system, you can have multiple compilers, whether it's GNU or Cray or Intel compilers. And then you can specify whether you want to use hardware performance counters from PAPI uh, for measurements so that you can go deeper and look at the level one, level two data cache messages, floating point instructions executed, and so on. We can also specify which MPI libraries to use or which version of CUDA to use. So normally, with any library, when you have so many options to configure, you would end up creating separate directories for the tool with each of those options. But that can waste a lot of space. So what we do is we allow Tau to be configured with multiple configurations in the same directory. So each time you configure Tau, it creates a unique configuration file or a unique stub make file. And it creates a unique library that it's generated when you configure it. So when you instrument the source code automatically with PDT, you need to specify the location of the make file. So on our chair, we can just load the Tau module and then select an appropriate stub make file which corresponds to how your application uses the compilers and the MPI. And simply change the name of the compiler. So instead of MPI F90 or FTM, you would use Tau F90.sh. 
sort of the capital C C would use tau underscore C X X dot S H or tau U P C dot S H and so on. And you just compile the programs and then you can just uh, launch the tool uh, such as eProf or paraprof to view the profiles. Paraprof is that good. So the steps are you first install tau using first install the program database toolkit, you download it, you configure it, and when you install tau, you can specify the location of PDT. For Cray, you use the arch equals Cray CNL, and then you can install tau and set the tau make file environment variable, and simply replace the name of the compiler with uh, the appropriate tau shell script. So here is the uh, output from from Archer, where I can say module load tau, and I can just list the dollar tau, which points to the tau's architecture lib directory, and make file the star. So here I can see the names of the stub make files. Now, if you notice, for Intel compilers, we have options for MPI with PDT. And PDT, should, you should remember, is only uh, an option that uh, specifies the use of source to source instrumentation. So we have one configuration with PAPI for hardware performance counters, one without PAPI, one with OpenMP with Opari. And Opari is a toolkit from Research into Gulish which allows you to rewrite the OpenMP directives and add hooks for measuring the performance of OpenMP. And then we have the OpenMP tools interface, and then there's a configuration with Python. So here, if I have, a, say, an MPI with OpenMP Photon application, which uses the Intel MPI, or, or uh, Intel compilers with MPI, rather, I can choose the Intel PAPI MPI PDT OpenMP Party configuration by simply setting this tau big file environment variable. Now, this this one slide, slide number 11, is really key in the use of tau. You set the tau big file environment variable. And then you change the compiler to use the tau f90 data sets. And you compile it, you run it, and generate the profile files. There are several compile time variables that you can use. And uh, these are set uh, by setting the tau options environment variable. You can turn on compiler based instrumentation, for instance, by using the opt comp over here. Or you can track the I.O. in the application by setting tau options to include the opt track I.O. You can also specify selective instrumentation file by setting the tau select file and then pointing to the file and so on. So here are some other options where you can pass parameters specifically to the parsers. So here I see how we can set in a tau selector instrumentation file, and I can specify the path to this selector tau, and put instrument statements in it, such as loops routine equals hash, which means please instrument all the routine, uh, all the loops in routines. Outer loops are instrumented, and then once you set the tau options environment variable, the tau compiler scripts will read the selector instrumentation file. There are also a number of uh, runtime variables that affect how tau performs for measurements, such as you can turn on call path profiling, or turn on tracing, or track power periodically, or, or set sampling equals one. You can also turn on communication matrix tracking by setting the tau com matrix equals one. If you are using a large number of cores, I recommend that you use the tau profile format to merge. This generates a single tau profile.xml file instead of generating a profile file for each thread of execution. If you're using PAPI and other counters, you can set the tau metrics environment variable, which is by default just time, but you can set variables such as PAPI floating point instructions, PAPI underscore native underscore name of the event, which you can get from PAPI native available or you can track energy. 
There are other options for event-based sampling and memory debugging that are available. And Tau also includes a tool called Tau Exec. A Tau Exec is meant to simplify the usage of Tau by just launching an uninstrumented dynamic executable with Tau Exec. Now on Craze, by default we generate static executables at times. So you must uh, generate dynamic executables and then turn on uh, the, the, by launching the code, you can just use Tau Exec. So here are examples of the use of Tau Exec. With the dash T parameter, we can specify tags which are identical to the tags that we just saw in our stub make file names. So you can specify the use of PAPI, MPI, PDT, and so on by looking at the Tau Exec. If you have a, a GPU execution, you can turn on the support for CUPT using the Tau Exec dash CUPT. Now, if you have an instrumented application, then you don't need to use Tau Exec. This is only if you want to use an uninstrumented application with Tau that you can use Tau Exec. If you have compiled it with the Tau wrappers, you don't need to launch it with Tau Exec. There are also uh, other tools in Tau such as support for rewriting the binaries using tau rewrite and tau run. But that support is a little experimental and is not as robust as we would like it to be at this point in time. But it gets better with each new iteration. So with this, let me just show you an example of instrumenting your program, measuring it, and then generating profile files that we can view in Paraprof. So with this, let me just turn on over here. I've logged into I have logged into Archer, and let me just uh, look at the NAS parallel benchmark over here. So in the NAS parallel benchmark, I can see the config directory, and there we have defined the name of the compiler. By default, it is FTN, like here. Now, I can either change that to tau f 90 and hard code it in the make file, or I can just uh, specify it on the command line. So by default, if I say make clean, make sweet, and it builds the uninstrumented binary in this way, then I can just replace the name of the compiler and generate uh, the, the BT binary here. So I can say make clean, then clear, make sweet, but change MPI F77 to tau F77 dot But before I do that, I should look at which tau configuration I want to use. So I will say module load tau, and then in the tau configuration, there's an environment variable called dollar tau, which points to the architecture lib directory, like here. Then I can say dollar tau, show me the make files that are available. And here are a number of make files. So let me just pick one with say Intel compilers, PAPI support, MPI, and support for program database toolkit. So if I pick this, I can say ls dollar tau, and that's the stub make file. I'd say tau make file equals this. And then I'll make MPI F77 equals tau, say F90 RSH, and sweet. Now here, what happens is it instruments the program. Wait, what happened?
Yeah, okay. So it parses the source code the program and then it instruments the code and then we can generate the executor. Can you speak up that? Sure. So essentially we are parsing the source code and then instrumenting it and then generating the executable. In both ways, F77.sh and F90.sh should work. There is make FNTI F77. And you can also set other tau options, such as pre-processing the source code if it has hooks in it. So it creates the binary and then we uh, launch the tau uh, instrumented code using this. So here, let me just. I can launch a shell and then compile my codes and uh, launch. Yeah, that's fine. It's, it's, it, is this better? Okay. Let's see. Uh, bin dot tau, and then when you run it like this. BT Z We will generate the Okay, so we can just uh, launch the code like this and then generate the profile files and then we can view them. You can see the number of uh, threads that you can set to OMP non threads. And so on. But remember to delete the profile files from a previous run as you said this. So export OMP num threads equals to four. And launch the binary. And then you will generate the profile files. And these can be viewed in the Paraprof 3D profile browser. So since I'm on a Wi-Fi network, let me try just uh, tacking the profile files using the paraprof dash dash pack command. And it loads it. And let me just uh, go over here. CP BT dot PPK to Delta from the login node and then there. Dropbox just updated it and you can launch. the Paraprof browser and then look at the performance data and so on. So I'll uh, show some features of the 3D profile browser. So we can see the bar plots. We can see the scatter plots. We need to move quite slowly because of the tiny tapes. OK. We just keep an eye on them so you can see that. Sure. And we can rotate the view. You can use the second mouse button to translate it. You can zoom in and zoom out. So 
in this 3D profile browser, we can see the MPI ranks over here along one axis. We can look at the names of functions along the other axis, which we can also see in this function slider bar. And then we can look at the total time spent in the application as the height and the color metric. So uh, this is uh, just one example of the use of, uh, of Parapath. There are many other windows that you may be interested in looking at. Uh, let me just uh, cover the other features of Parapath and the uh, different windows. So uh, here what we saw was we instrumented the program by replacing the compiler by a tau compiler script. We set the tau make file environment variable. We set the name of the compiler as the tau compiler. And we ran the application on Archer. And we performed the measurements for profiling and launched the Paraprof profile browser to view the profile. There are other tools in this uh, tau suite, including Perf Explorer, that can help you look at the scalability of the code. And we can also store the data in a tau database and connect it to the Paraprof and Perf Explorer profile browsers. Besides profiling, we can also support tracing. And uh, we have a number of trace visualizers, such as JumpShot, which is bundled with tau, the Vampire Trace Visualizer, and uh, Paravair, which comes from Barcelona's computing center. So uh, this is the overview of the Paraprof profile browser. It has windows for call trees, for call graphs, histogram displays, bar charts, the 3D display that you just saw. And it also supports a range of other profile formats. So we can view in Paraprof data generated from tau, MPIP, HPM toolkit, and even gprof. So the profile browser, as I described, has these three axes. One is for the functions over here. And we can see the ranks along one axis. And then the height can be the exclusive time spent in the application. So you can see the overall shape of your application profile using Paraprof. Here is a communication matrix display. And here, I can see the senders along one axis, the MPI ranks, and the receivers along the other axis. And the height can be, again, configured. In this case, the height is configured to be the number of calls. And uh, the color value is the message volume in bytes along a given call path. So you can even slice it uh, along a given edge of a calling graph. Or you can sum up all the values and see for the whole application what was the communication matrix. And to generate this, you must set the tau.com matrix environment variable to 1. And then you can uh, see this view in Paraprof 3D communication matrix. So our goal here today is to make sure that you feel comfortable in the in the use of Paraprof and, and uh, apply it to your applications. So we typically hold a two-day workshop where we work with all the users and their codes and, and apply the tools. But in this short presentation, you should be familiar with what are the features of Tau and how they might be applicable to your application. So if you want to learn more about uh, the Perf Explorer tool, you can just download the data from this directory and then just follow the steps and upload the data to a database that will be created in your own space and launch Perf Explorer and view the charts. So in the benchmark example, we were looking at the NAS parallel benchmark and uh, the make.dev file that I described where we can just change the name of the compiler from one to the other. So instead of MPI i4 or FTN, we would use the tau f 90sh script. And then we can uh, build the we can build the 
benchmark by typing make sweet and then run the application. So uh, I just showed you how we can run it with uh, with the interactive session, but you can also use a shell, shell, you know you can use a job submission script and launch the application binary and then generate the performance data. If you want to use Tau exec, you need to just launch the application with the Tau exec command and there are various options. One of the interesting options is the EBS or the event based sampling. What this does is it allows you to generate samples for your application uh, and as the code executes we take the samples periodically and then look at the application performance. You can also launch uh, OpenMP applications with the dash OMPT flag which will intercept the OpenMP commands using the OpenMP tools interface. So uh, when you launch Paraprof, you get two windows. The first is a manager window which shows you the metrics that are measured in any execution. So here we are just seeing the time metric, but if you set the tau metrics environment variable to record floating point instructions and wall clock time and say level one data cache misses, all of those metrics will appear as these green balls in the manager window. Then in the main window, we see for each MPI rank and thread, the colors which represent code regions or functions. So you can go to the options uh, menu in Paraprof and uncheck the stack bars together like this. And then each function lies in its own space. So you can see how much time is being spent in each routine. Now it's important to note that we are not seeing a timeline over here. It's the summary statistics of that function across all invocations summed up and shown over here. But you can see many interesting windows by just clicking the right mouse button or the left mouse button. If you click the left mouse button, you get a view like this, which shows you the time spent in each OpenMP loop in the application. And then you can see the bar plot in this window. You can move the function and thread sliders. So uh, here is the Paraprof thread statistics table. We can also look at uh, this uh, thread statistics, statistics table with tau sampling equals one and launch that thread statistics table using the right mouse button like this. There is a statement level profiling with tau where you can right click on any function and say show the source code location and it jumps to the source code. Here is the thread statistics table that I was describing. Now what is unique about this table is that you can open up the elements in this and expand and contract the, the entities and then you can also click on the exclusive and inclusive time and sort them according to that by just clicking on the on the column header, like clicking here to sort the exclusive time. And then you can move the the different columns around. Here is the source instrumentation with uh, PDT and Upari, and you can look at uh, 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 the whole list of functions. Now you may find that some functions have this annotation called throttled. Now what that implies is that as the application executes, it deems some of those functions to be lightweight and uh, not worthy of instrumentation. And it determines this by measuring the total inclusive time spent in the function. Now if the total inclusive time per call falls below a threshold for a function that gets called say over a hundred thousand times, then it stops and and puts that function in a separate disable group. So the instrumentation is disabled in that function and then we can see that it's uh, throttled at runtime and so subsequent calls to that function do not access the system clock. So the application runs faster by throttling the functions. 
Now, after executing the application, you can also launch the the Paracraft tool and create a selective instrumentation file which contains the names of these functions in an exclude list. And then you can point that selective instrumentation file using tau options with the opt tau select file to the new selective instrumentation file and re-instrument the program. So what we're doing here is we take the original execution, we measure the performance of all the functions, and we kind of weed out the functions that were lightweight and were throttled. And then we generate the, the selective instrumentation file and re-instrument the code so that we have a more compact instrumentation. Now in this uh, example, I'm showing how we can use the Intel Xeon Phi KNL, so rather KNC system, and use native events. So on a KNC, uh, as we know, we have the AVX 512 instruction. And uh, this instruction is executed uh, by the vector processing unit. And it's critical to get good uh, efficiency for your code to use those VPUs effectively. Now we have, uh, uh, in our double precision, uh, uh, double precision word, we have like 64 bits, and we can execute eight of these 64-bit uh, uh, operations, uh, or, or rather, an operation involving eight of these uh, double precision vector uh, array elements in one cycle. So. If the peak usage of uh, the, the VPU can be eight double precision elements in each cycle, we can measure uh, by setting the tau matrix environment variable three things. We can say measure the time and measure the VPU elements that are active and the VPU instructions that were executed. And then we can use tau to create derived metrics in Paraprof. And we can say divide the elements that are active with the instructions that are executed by seeing this. And then we can sort it by the exclusive time so that the functions that take the most time are at the top. So we can see for each do loop, whether it's in X or Y or Z solve files, what is the peak vectorization intensity. And out of eight, we see that it reached a maximum of 2.5. So it's things like this that we can use to evaluate how well the code can be vectorized and what is the peak that we can get for the key regions in the application. We also have a comparison window in Tau where we can compare multiple threads from the same execution by just right-clicking on a given thread and saying, uh, add this thread to the comparison window. And we can also look at uh, data from other tools, such as uh, Scalaska. So here there is a scout.cubex file, which can be loaded directly in Paraprof. And you can see the data for each thread of execution and the thread statistics table where we can expand and contract each each uh, element. And you can sort by a given metric by simply clicking on it. In a thread call path relation, uh, call path thread relations window, we can see for any given function indicated by an arrow, what are the immediate parents and immediate children for that function. So it shows that uh, this OpenMP parallel region was called about 3,232 times. It spent 2.5 seconds in this particular region. And the time for the 2.5 seconds is spread over all of its children, as we can see over here. And then you can see how many times each of those was called. Like here it shows that the implicit barrier was invoked 3,232 times from this parallel region, but that barrier itself was called a total of 51,680 times. 
there is the 3D visualization window showing the entire profile of your application and you can use the function and the thread slider like this. We are able to see not just time but uh, say vectorization intensity by dividing the two metrics that we saw earlier. So we can see the mic vectorization intensity for all the functions across all the ranks and see their current values such as this uh, routine reaching 7.5 on a scale of 8. The 3D scatter plot allows you to spread out the functions along three different axes. These are typically selected by looking at this standard deviation of functions and these vary a lot. And each rank occupies a unique location in this 3D space because we have the minima to maxima spread out across each of those three functions and there is a fourth function which is the color function and every rank has a unique value for each of those three functions so we just put the the ball at the point where it, it corresponds to the time spent in those functions on that rank and then we can see clustering behaviors that show up for a given set of ranks the node view can show you all the the elements of uh, the functions as well as the call paths. So when you see a function name such as main arrow ADI arrow Y solve it means it's the time spent in this OMP do loop in the Y solve dot F file at line 52 when it was called by this parallel region when it was called by Y solve which was, when it was called by ADI and then main. We can compare two, two different ranks by the thread comparison window by right clicking on it. And we can also connect to a different database and add experiment trials and applications. In the file preferences window, we can look at changing the association of a function by grouping functions in new groups and creating these new groups and adding a function to that group by the group changer window. This is the derived metric panel which you can get to by clicking the options menu and you can click on options, uh, you can click on metrics such as the vector processing unit number of elements that are active to the total number of instructions executed and click A divided by B to create that. We can also sort the metrics, derived metrics, by a different metric. So you can go to the options and sort by an exclusive time. And this is our web page, and we can download Tau along with other tools from this OVA file. I'll just take some time to show you the uh, the performance data uh, that we have collected. So let me yeah, an example of data from the multiple threads. We have used the OMPT package to instrument at the level of loops. And I can see over here different threads of execution. So you can go to options and then you can say don't stack the bars together. So here, I can now see all the functions in their own space. Yes. So by hovering your uh, by hovering your mouse over a particular color, you can see what that function is. Now you can either click here left click button will bring up all the functions on that given node. So here I can see all the open MP loops and implicit task and the time spent in barrier on that loop. And you can always right click and say show me the source code to then look at the source listing of that code. I don't have the source code over here with me, but I uh, can do that. Now, if you click on a color, 
it will show you the time spent in that function across all the nodes like this and it is sorted from the minimum to maximum to the minimum amount you can also sort it by different ways such as by the node context and thread and you can also sort it by the descend, ascending value so you can see what each rank each thread was doing if you right click over here you can see the thread statistics table that will show you the time spent in that particular thread for all the functions and here is the level 1 data cache misses so you, if you want to see the level 1 data cache misses by loop you can see that by clicking here the name of uh, so this data comes from a KNL system 7250 and that information is stored in the CPU type and you can see over here the 3D view of this this uh, profile so here I can now see how the time was spent by clicking on the bar plot let me expand this and we can rotate this and see the shape of the whole profile of the different open MP loops in this example the color is the color is actually the same thing as the height but you see this is the level 1 data cache misses so I can choose time as the height and then I can choose the color as level 1 data cache misses so I can choose two different things to show here and here's the color scale so you can see the count says 1 million uh, would be red and then you can see which parts are red and find out spikes in your code where those functions are executing and then you can look at here this is the OpenMP parallel region where you do the initialization and this is a name that's given by the Intel compiler so you can measure two different things and the reason I, I brought up this profile is that if I look at the time I can sort it by different ways so for instance if I had level 1 data cache misses and I said show me the metric of exclusive level 1 data cache misses but sort it by the exclusive time okay so now I'm sorting the full list by an exclusive time in this case it's probably the same it doesn't change but uh, could see inclusive data cache misses and sort it by the exclusive time so you can now see the inclusive data cache misses and which functions uh, take the most time so they are at the top so this view can be very useful when you are trying to find out which functions matter the most and what is the value of some counter for those functions So uh, the 3D view also has a scatter plot where I can see for each of those four functions that it determines on its own what is the minima to maxima. So here I can see it's going from 0 to 16,029 and the parallel region initialization is that function so three three of those ranks kind of stand out out of the whole 
group of ranks and then I can look at that particular function and say what happens in this region in it and which are these three ranks by looking at that rank 0 and initialize region init L init parallel region and say show me the function bar charts and see that these are the three ranks on which it executes 0, 1 and 2 the other threads don't execute on that so here it's an easy you can easily see that there are three ranks that are different from the rest because they execute these functions and you can see that even over here in that 3D view that these three ranks execute that function parallel region So you can instrument your application at uh, many different levels with Tau, but uh, the source instrumentation can be a good starting point. And then once you generate the performance data, you can launch Paraprof and then view it based on this. So uh, at, at this point, I would just like to take some questions because there's just five minutes left and see if anyone has any questions about Tau. Any questions? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to know. Um, so, as I was saying, I'll finish here from Is it possible for you to demonstrate an example of power on the deck with NPI for power? Um, so we are uh, we are working on this particular issue with MPI for Pi. It uh, here, let me just show you an example here. So. Here is an example where I have a an application that uses MPI for PY I'm using the MPI calls over here and then it uh, performs some computation using uh, native naive matmult and then it's using the numpy uh, and it does the numpy dot product of the matrix multiplication so uh, which Python so Python I can launch this as a which MPI run MPI run minus NP4 Python with and then MPI dot PY there is no tau involved over here and it multiplies the same matrices on four different processors. So let me remove any profile files and to get uh, I tau 225 one installation. So here I have a bindings directory for Python. This is the directory that contains my tau.py and liptau.so. So what I do is I 
I can set the Python path to be this bindings directory. Python path. Then I can set my path so that I put the tau bin directory in it. So I can have a tau Python script over here. Okay, so normally I would launch the execution using this. To use tau, I have set the Python path which includes the binding directory. And then I can say npi run, npi run minus np4 tau python with mn npi dot py. Okay. So it uh, launches this execution. And at the end of it, I'll generate profile files. So you can see the profile files by pprof-a if you just want to see the text output. And it shows you the tau application. It took three and a half seconds. It's inclusive time. And then the naive example, naive matmult, naive matrix. And all the calls to MPI appear over here as well. So without any changes in the actual Python binary or any changes to your dot py file, you can just simply change the way you launch it from Python to tau Python. Okay, let me just uh, pack this and to say mpy not multi-ppk. SCP this mpy not multi-ppk. And then Paraprof.mumpy.ppk shows up. I can see the time spent. So the naive matmult in this case took 2.6 seconds. And you can see the time spent in all the other functions, including the dot function, which was from numpy. So here, you can see the time spent in dot. There's another question. Yes. Um, it's about uh, can tau be used with core array Fortran codes? Yes, tau can be used with core array Fortran codes. Uh, we can uh, use the compiler-based instrumentation. And in fact, we have worked out a, a small patch to the core uh, runtime so that we can suppress a MPI launcher task from interfering with the data generated by the regular MPI image ranks. Uh, we should uh, discuss this. Uh, and uh, please email me at uh, cs.org.edu. Oh, I just had a question about off-track IA. Yes, so... Using the, the code that uses HDF5 for its IA. Okay, yes, you can use the off-track IO with a code that uses HDF5. So uh, the important thing is tau should be configured with... Uh, it should be configured with uh, the dash IO wrapper. So, so if I configure it, for example, like this, configure the PDT in PD Toolkit 3.22, BFD equals download, which is a very important flag if you want to use compiler-based instrumentation. And uh, if I say C++ equals MPI, CXX, and so on. Fortran equals MPI F90. And then put the IO wrapper over there. That IO wrapper will allow us to use uh, the POSIX IO instrumentation. To see how I configured Python, I've configured it this way. I can just uh, configure a version over here without Python, but with IO wrapper like this, and make the install. Right. 
are you wrapper there so once you get the io wrapper then you can use either optrack io while compiling your code or you can then use uh, tau exec dash io and you will see the time spent in all the io operations so i'm just going to install this it takes less than a minute to configure tau here this is on a stock linux x86 64 box with uh, open mpi 1.10 and pdt 322 And I'll go to an example where I have, say, four processes, uh, four MPI ranks that just do uh, an I/O operation with uh, HDF, uh, with uh, say, POSIX I/O. So examples, I/O wrappers, MPI POSIX. There are other examples that I have there for HDF five and how to wrap it. But here is a food or three. All I'm doing is MPI in it and then finalize. I take a buffer, 100 by 100 buffer. So it's 10,000 elements of integers. So it's about 40,000 elements. I create a file which is out dot rank dot dat, and then just fill up the buffer with some arbitrary numbers, and then write it 10,000 times. Okay. If I want to measure the performance of this, you say make clean. Uh, sorry, unset. So I can look at the tau 2251 x86 make file that I just defined and say export, sorry, set in tau make file to be this. And then I can say set in tau options as opt track IO, opt purpose. So I'll instrument the file. So I can say cow cc dot sh foo dot c give me foo. Okay. And it will put in the wrappers for all the POSIX IO wrappers for write, for instance. And then I will run this on four CPUs like this. Okay. So now I have profile files and the output files. So if I see the Profile output, I can see the time spent in write call as taking up 78% of the total time. And I can see the total number of bytes that were written. It shows me that, you know, it wrote, it wrote 10,000, you know, 100 by 100, 10,000 samples. And each sample had a max value and min value and mean value which were exactly the same of 40,000 bytes. That is the four elements for integer times 100 by 100. This is the bytes written, and this is the call path that takes you to the write call, which is just main calling write. And you can see the bytes were written to the file out.dat.0 on rank 0. But the file out.1 had 0 bytes written on rank 0. It had the bytes from rank 1. And you can also see the exact write bandwidth, which varied from two megabytes per second all the way to 1,667 megabytes per second. There were 10,000 samples, as you imagine, with a, with a mean value of uh, you know, 262. And then you can see the right bandwidth. You also see marker events, which is are triggered. Is it in the same way? Pardon? Is it, can this stuff be plotted in the 3D? Oh, absolutely. So you can say paraprof, say packet to POSIX IO dot PPK. Okay. And CP POSIX IO PPK to say delta. And I'm just uh, transferring this file over. And let me bring it up over here. Clara prof POSIX IO dot PPK, the Dropbox just uh, delivered. And here is the total time in the functions. 
But if I right click here, I can see the show context event menu. And here I can see in the context events exactly how many total bytes were written, and the minimum, maximum values. I can see along which call path bytes were written. OK. I can see the 3D window. If I want to see how much time was taken in the right, I can do the 3D visualization. And here, here are just four ranks. So it's not very create. And this is the right profile. It took 1.8 seconds on thread 0 and 1.6 seconds on other threads. And so you can see what, what was going on for the application. Okay. Do Is there any to, other question? I don't think so. Do you want to just mention, just ask if there are any questions? Um, are there any um, questions? And then just mention the caveat with the Archer, the problem on the Archer platform for regarding Python. Yes, so uh, there is some issue with the file system and the, where the tools are located that we are still investigating on Archer. I just showed you uh, the Python with MPI working properly. Now, I, I've been able to get the Python with MPI working on a single rank, but somehow when we r run it with multiple ranks, it's not uh, uh, generating the profile data uh, or running the application. So we are investigating that issue. It just needs to be debugged. But uh, if you have a, any other cluster, you can easily install tal the way I did, and, and you can get that uh, MPI with Python working. The other thing is uh, you can also use uh, with uh, tal Python. You can also use uh, other options in tal. So if you had samples. So if you said set in tau call path equals one, and then you run this. We apologize for the noise in the background. Then you should be able to generate call path profiles in this way. But show you the total time spent in the, the along the given call path. So Python call path dot ppk, for instance. If I just do Yeah, it's okay. It's come here. You are called the ticket. And here I can look at the total time, the thread statistics table. It shows me that 3.6 seconds were spent in the application. And then I can expand it and expand it. So it says the naive example took 2.9 seconds and the NumPy example took. 0.3 seconds, right? So I can expand it and then see exactly where the time was spent in, say, the dot routine. Now, dot is a function that's called by the Python code, but it's a it's a C function. So it can even show you at the call site of a C function how much time is being spent. And I can see these functions called by the sample and uh, other application. And if I wanted to see the, the source code, I can just uh, uh, and then I can ship the source code over so I can then look at the source code like this. As soon as I get the notification from Dropbox there, the file has been added. I can say see source code and see the exact source code for the Python. So here we have the, all the Python functions, and you can see where the time has been spent.